solving equations. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so first thing you need to know is that whenever you're solving equations with a radical, okay, so that's our main focus, although it could possibly have a rational, meaning a fractional exponent. So keep in mind this is all kind of in the same family. There are three main steps, okay? We, first and foremost, need to isolate the radical, okay? So that it's all on one side as best as possible. The second thing you need to do is you need to raise each side to the same exponent as the index so you can eliminate it, all right? Basically, you're going to apply the inverse in the second step. So like first step is isolate, second step is the inverse, and then the third step is to finish solving for your variable, all right? Whatever that equation you might get, you need to go about solving it the way you would solve that type of thing, whether it's linear, quadratic, etc. And then the last thing you're going to need to do is check your solution. So step three really has two parts, solve and check. All right, so let's just do a basic problem right here. Let's do this middle one, okay? So our radical is this thing right here, all this stuff. So that one that's hanging out outside of it, it has to go. So I'm going to add one to both sides. So I'm going to have the cube root of the quantity 2x minus 9 is equal to 3, all right? So that's step one, boom. Step two, inverse, so I have a cube root. So I am going to cube both sides in order to get rid of it. All right, so whew, those two things undo. So now I'm left with 2x minus 9 equals 27. Okay, and then step 3 says to solve what I've got. I have a linear equation, right? This is 2x to the first. So I'm going to add 9 to both sides so that I get 2x is equal to 36. I'm going to divide both sides by 2, and so x is 18. Maybe. All right. Now we, when I say maybe, it's because we definitely want to check our answer. And the way we're going to check our answer is we're going to just substitute it back into the original equation. So we've got the cube root of 2 times 18 minus 9 minus 1 is apparently equal to 2. All right. Well, 2 times 18 is 36, minus 9 is 27, so the cube root of 27, that thing minus 1, is definitely 2. So we know that we this works out. So x is, in fact, 18. Okay? How about you try one of our more complicated ones with a few steps, maybe this next one right here. And this problem down here and then I'll go over those answers with you in a moment. So pause the video and then we will try those problems. All right, welcome back. So it can sometimes be helpful to identify which part is the root, so I'm gonna put a little box around that. So it looks like I need to subtract 14, so I'm gonna have negative three times the square root of 16x is negative 24. And then I'm going to divide both sides by negative 3, so they get the square root of 16x is equal to 8. And now I need to get rid of my root, so I'm going to square both sides. So that undoes it, so I get 16x equals 64. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 16, so I get that x is very likely 4. Okay? And so the way that I would check that is I would do negative 3 times the square root of 16 times 4 is 64 plus 14. So let's see, that'd be negative 3 times 8 plus 14. So negative 24 plus 14 is for sure negative 10. So that checks out. All right, so so far my answers have worked. All right, and then let's do the same thing down here. So I'm going to need to add 16. 6 times the cube root. Don't forget to carry that cube down, okay, that's going to make a big difference that's going to affect what your answer is going to be. So I'm going to divide both sides by 6. So you get the cube root of 25x equals 5. I'm going to cube both sides. So 25x equals 125. So then x is going to be 5. 
And then if I think about my answer, the cube root of 125 is 5 times 6 is 30 minus 16. Yep, that checks out. All right. If we have time, you can come back and try these other three, and I'll share the answers with you later. But we're moving on to some other situations. So two other things to consider. These problems over here all were equal to a number. Okay, pretty straightforward to square a number less straightforward to square something like in this problem where we've got the square root by itself but we're going to have to square a binomial okay and so what that means is that on the left side things are nice I get 2x minus 14 but on the right side what I really have is x minus 7 that quantity squared so I get x squared minus 14x plus 49 I have a quadratic now remember when I have a quadratic I have to factor or I have to use um, quadratic formula or some other method to solve. So the first thing I have to do is move everything so that it's on one side. So those of you that were like, oh, I thought we were done with quadratics, not so much. Okay, so at this point, I have a quadratic and I'm hoping that that quadratic factors, okay? So let's see, I've got x times x and then some numbers that multiply to 63 and add up to negative 16. It looks like negative 9 and negative 7 are the way to go. So I then solve this like a quadratic. I set each factor equal to 0 and solve each individual factor. Now, just like before, we need to check and make sure our answers work. So if I check 9, I get 18 minus 14, the square root of that number, is apparently equal to 9 minus 7. Square root of 4, is that equal to 2? Yes. So 9 works. And then in uh, the second value, I get the square root of 14 minus 14 equals 7 minus 7. That is also true. So both of our answers work. All right. In the case of this problem right here, I've got a square root on both sides so sometimes when you square both sides to get rid of the root you just get a regular old linear equation pretty nice right so I get 2x is equal to 14 x is equal to 7 and if I check my answer 21 minus 5 the square root of that would be the square root of 16 equals the square root of 16 yep that's the same so our answer works out all right but sometimes, let's try this problem up here. When we square both sides, so we're going to get x squared plus 2x plus 1, and we're going to get 7x plus 15. All right, so again, we squared both sides because we needed to eliminate this root. So we square our binomial, and then we move everything over to the same side. So I'm going to move everything to the left this time. So I get x squared minus 5x minus 14. So another quadratic. And this looks like it factors to x minus 7 and x plus 2. So just like before, I set each factor equal to 0. And... I solve those factors and I'm going to check my answers. Now 7, when I substitute that in, that's going to give me 8 is apparently equal to square root of 49 plus 15. That looks like it's going to work out because that's 64 underneath the root. But when I substitute in negative 2, I'm going to get a negative number is equal to the square root of 1 because I get negative 14 plus 15. That means negative 1 is equal to the square root of 1. And guys, that's not true. When you evaluate the square root of 1, this value is positive 1. And that's false, okay? So this statement is false. When you check an answer and you see that a statement is false, incorrect in some way, that answer does not count. And we would say EXT. Now, EXT is the sort of standard abbreviation for extraneous solution, okay? An extraneous solution is a solution that you get while solving, but that doesn't really work. 
So this is a solution that does not work. All right, so you think it's a solution, but it's not. It's extra. It's extraneous, okay? So that is going to be more likely to happen when you are solving a quadratic in the process of evaluate, um, solving a radical function. Okay, now, like I said, there's a few more practice problems in here that you could try if you wanted to, but we've got one more idea we need to talk about, and then I'll leave you the rest of those problems for practice. So the last thing we need to talk about is solving a radical inequality, okay? Only two big rules that we need to keep in mind. Inequalities, if we divide by a negative, you need to switch the inequality. And two, you still need to check your answers. Okay, but otherwise it's basically the same type of problem. So, you know, in this first example we would add four so 3 square roots of x equal, sorry, are greater than or equal to 9. We divide by 3. So square root of x equals 3. So we square both sides. And so x is greater than or equal to 9. Okay? Now, it wouldn't be a bad idea to check your answer, right, by doing something like, okay, I'm going to take 3 times the square root of 9 minus 4 and see if that's greater than or equal to 5. So that's going to be 3 times 3, so 9 minus 4. Yeah, that's going to be equal to 5. And then maybe picking a larger number, like 3 square roots of 25 minus 4. So that's going to be 15 minus 4, which is 11. That's greater than or equal to 5, so you know it works. So that is definitely our correct answer. Um, but Let's take a look at something like this question over here where we've got a less than or equal to, so we add 6 to both sides. So I'm going to rewrite this as negative 1 fourth times the square root of x is less than or equal to 3. And I'm going to multiply by negative 4, okay, to undo this 1 fourth. So it's going to give me the square root of x is less than, is, sorry, is not less than or equal to, it's greater than or equal to negative 12, okay? And now I'm going to square both sides. So that means x is going to be greater than or equal to 144, okay? So hopefully we remember that rule about the flip because of the negative, okay? So that's the big thing to keep in mind. And again, if you want to check that to make sure it works, uh, we want this to be a positive number because we're taking the square root and we want to get real solutions. And so their values are going to be negative because we're going to have a negative times a positive, and then we're subtracting. So they're definitely going to be less than or equal to negative 3 in the way that we're going. All right. OK, how about you try this question right here? And then we should call it, should we, we should be good. So take a moment, pause the video, and try this question right here. All right, welcome back. Hopefully you divided both sides by four and got the cube root of x plus one is less than two. And then hopefully you cubed both sides so you got x plus one is less than eight and that you subtracted one. And so x is less than negative seven. All right, hopefully you're feeling pretty good about that. Thanks for listening, folks. Have a good one.